All right, check out this box. So this is this wall is the side of my cabin here. This is the box that all the electronics are going to go into. They're going to just go through the wall here. So this is kind of like it's part of the cabin. But at some point, this cable is going to go up through the bottom of the box. There's like four inches of insulation and some plywood to hopefully keep all the critters out so they don't chomp on the wires. This is like the battery box that the batteries are going to slide into. So those two big batteries. And then, yeah, we'll put somewhere all the rest of the electronics kind of on the wall here. So hopefully that'll provide uh, the power and the heat and everything for the winter. And it's all in this nice newly renovated shed on the side of the cabin. And I kind of enjoy building all that stuff. It's quite fun. It's this stuff that kind of worries me. So these are the two, the two batteries, an inverter. We have the junction box, some stuff that came with the batteries. This is the breaker box, solid state relay, some cable, some of this cable, some more stuff here. I don't know what that is. And I need to kind of make sense of this all and put it all up in that box in a way that it's not going to shock me or burn my house down. So I've been speaking with the guy who uh, is helping me out. and He's been great. Um, I guess the first step is to mount the inverter, which is this guy. So we'll take that over, mount it up, and see how everything fits together. Okay, so I've laid this out <clears throat> in somewhat of a chronological order so that I can kind of help figure out exactly what's going to happen. But that wire that we ran is basically going to come into this. This is our junction box. And as far as I can tell, this is the, uh, the giver and the shutter down switch. Um, so it's coming in an AC. It stays in AC through here to turn off everything. Then it goes through the rectifier. So it comes into the rectifier as AC, comes out as DC. Then the positive will run through this breaker box so that we can isolate. Um, oh, I guess, I don't know. I'm sure there's a fuse in there of some sort that will blow up if something happens. And then from there, it goes to the, this is an inverter slash charge controller. So it does both instead of having two different things. So it'll control the load going into the batteries and also go back to from the batteries back to this thing that will um, provide electricity to the house. And then, so the batteries will be just after that. So it'll be, so junction box, rectifier, <clears throat> circuit breaker, inverter, batteries, back to the inverter. And then this is the solid state relay, which to my knowledge is basically what diverts the load once the batteries are full. So that means I can, if the, Microhydro is producing a bunch of power, the batteries are full, I can divert it to like a baseboard heater or a water heater or something to utilize that power um, in the winter, most likely something to do with heat. And then these are the assorted cables and whatnot that are probably important to figure out where they go to plug that all in and make it work. So I hope that that helps. It definitely kind of helps me and uh, Let's see what it looks like once we get it in the box. All right, so I just built this little shelf here. And this face, I'm gonna put the inverter here to be a little easier to reach when I like open the door. And then that might be like a nice shelf up there just to store stuff. So but the cable's gonna come up here. I'm gonna put all that stuff that the cable goes into right away up this wall. And then the inverter will kind of be like right here, front and center and then the batteries will be underneath. And then maybe all the cables will be kind of like hidden behind here and above the battery and all that stuff. So I don't know exactly how it's gonna work out, but I'm gonna hang the inverter up here and see where it goes from there. All right, well, that looks pretty good. These things are deceivingly heavy. I felt like over a hundred pounds at least. So I've got like the two by four frame and it has four inch screws right through that two by four. 
Well, it's rough cut, so it's like dimensional. It's actually four by two, two by four. I wish it was more than just these two little screws holding it up, but <laughs> I guess I have a lot of faith in those. And um, now I gotta go get the batteries and slide those in. The inverter was a good warm up. These batteries are, holy smokes, probably over a hundred pounds each. And I gotta get them in somehow. So stay tuned for that struggle. Inverter plus two batteries. We're going somewhere. <laughs> What's next? Well, I have good news and bad news. I figured out what the next step is. So I haven't really filmed much of the electronic portion of this. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I don't have any experience. I found I had trouble getting information on the system that I had. I took it apart and put it back together. I consulted neighbors and it was kind of a mess. So I didn't think it would be very productive of me to put any of that stuff in the video. Um, but I eventually had an electrician come out. He gave me some tips. I took his word <laughs> and uh, made a lot of fixes. And so I can show you what the final the final product is. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's all in here. The cable comes from the powerhouse and it goes, basically connects into this 10-3 wire and I run 10-3 wire the whole way. It comes up in through the top of this, um, epic, it's basically just an on off switch, but it's just like, -dunk! it sounds so cool. Like you're actually like turning like a big thing on. And then, so comes out from there, goes into here. So this is the rectifier. It looks a little busier than it should, but I wanted to put these little eyelet clamps on uh, instead of just, because it's solid wire in there. Um, you can just hook the wire around these things and then tighten it down. But I was pretty tentative to do that just in case the hook came loose and they were they would touch or they would come out or something, anyway. So I just moretted everything together and then put them in this stranded wire so I could add these little loops on and tighten that down really well so it's not going anywhere. It looks a little busy, but um, it works well. This, the rectifier has a little metal plate on the back that's a heat sink. This is what the electrician was telling me. So I've actually mounted this off the wood so that the rectifier can do, can kind of diffuse the heat into the metal box and then out. So from the rectifier, it comes in as AC, right? Three phase, and it comes out as DC. So positive and negative. So making sure those polarities are correct. That wire then runs up and goes into the PV input, which is photovoltaic. So it basically just thinks it's a solar panel, um, but that's how the power gets into the inverter. And then this DC output is what goes to the batteries. So you have a positive and a negative. The negative goes kind of straight from here and connects into this bus bar, which the batteries, both the batteries are connected to. And then the positive goes around the back, comes out through this on off switch. Uh, it's basically like a battery disconnect. Um, so it's a 200 amp. DC disconnect and then the positive comes down and connects to the positive bus bar with the batteries that are connected. So this means that the batteries are connected in parallel, not in series. So they're each um, 51 volt, 100 amp hour, um, 48 volt, yeah, basically 48 volt batteries. So you want them running in, in, uh, in parallel not in series, otherwise it would be like 96 volts, which is a lot. And then, so that's how the batteries in the inverter talk. And then there's this AC output. So that's where the actual electricity comes out and AC current goes from there in behind, comes out there 
and then goes up into my breaker box. And from here, this is just like your standard breaker box. And I have five runs in my cabin. So it goes through this little hole, which will stay open to the inside of the cabin, just again, for like a little bit of heat and air transfer, ventilation. And yeah, and those run to my all my lights and outlets and stuff. So it took me a while to figure it all out and oh, hook it all up in like a nice, neat way, but I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. Um, so hopefully that makes enough sense to everyone. Uh, I have a little bit of bad news. I was talking to that guy when I turned it on for the first time. So I turned my power on without you. Ah! But I was like, honestly, so stressed out that I don't know that I fully enjoyed it anyway. It was pretty like, it was really exciting, but very, very stressful. Um, so I'm happy to do it again. And we'll pretend like it's the first time because I'll actually be able to enjoy it this time. Okay, let's turn everything on for the first time ever. <laughs> So we start with the batteries. And so we turn the batteries on. Then we turn the batteries to the inverter on. Ooh. So then we can turn the inverter on. Nice. I don't know if you can see that screen. So it's just timing on. So there we have input. So that's how many volts are coming into it and how many that'll end up being watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this switch because the micro hydro is running. So that turns the micro hydro on and we should see input. So you just saw this little solar panel. So that means it recognizes that there's now a PV input that is going DC to DC. Oh, that's an AC input. Okay. So here we see that we have 198 volts coming in, creating 224 watts. And so as this number falls, so you can see this is PV1 input, 152. We're up at 578 watts. Wow, 578. That's pretty good, pretty good. And so this means that the batteries are charging. This means that it's converting DC to AC to power the light bulbs. So we're at 120 volts. We have a 491 continuous watts coming in. So all that work for this moment, and we have somewhere around about 500 continuous watts, which is pretty amazing. Oh, that's way better. And so right now you can see the SOC's state of charge. So it's only at one. And that's why the alarm is going off. And the batteries are just got them and put them in. So they need a, a good charge in them. Um, but that blinking green light means that they are charging. So they're both charging. And so we'll see how long it takes for them to become fully charged at 500 watts. I'm not that good at figuring everything out yet. But anyway, we'll come back and check in a little while and see if it's still doing this well, but pretty happy if we get 500 continuous watts rolling through here. That'll be more than enough to run everything I need to run and maybe even a little heater. Woohoo! I, I forgot to show you one thing. So this is 120 volts coming in. That's the watts that are coming in, all like the whatever info. And then if I scroll up here, this gives you, so the batteries are receiving 52.4 volts. So that means they're charging. It's more than 48 volts. And then this is the load that's being put on the batteries. So there's L1 and L2. So I guess there's two loads. 
and you can see that there's only there's zero watts on L2, one watt on L1. So I have all my all my all my breakers turned off. So there's no power right now going into the cabin. It's all just going from the inverter into the battery, and then there's no load on the house. Um, I'm just going to wait for the batteries to charge a little bit more before I turn the power onto the house, just in case. I don't know. Lithium batteries probably aren't supposed to be empty, so. But we still got 480 watts coming in. So ultimately, yeah, still pretty stoked. And that's as much as I've figured out about the system so far. <laughs>